Welcome to the RC Adventure Channel, everybody. So if your RC Adventure is taken near the water on a regular basis, then at some point or other, you've probably asked the question, what's the best way of protecting my electronics from getting wet and shorting out when I'm out on the lake? Well, there really isn't a best way. There's just a best way for your application. And I'm going to show you some of the tricks that I know, and I'll give you the pros and cons of each, and then you can make the decision from there as to what's going to be the best for you. First example I'm going to use is actually a little transmitter here that came with my ProBoat Sprint Jet 9 inch. And yeah, a lot of people don't think about transmitters, but these do get near the water and you may drop it by accident, so a little bit of protection can go a long way there. And this transmitter actually just separates into two pieces. All the electronics are in the top, the batteries are the only thing down in the grip, so we don't really need to worry too much about that. To protect it, I'm going to use this AMSOIL metal protector here. It's kind of like WD-40, and you probably could use WD-40 in its place. Uh, but I like this stuff a lot better because the majority of what comes out of this can is actually something I think they call a carrier agent, and it evaporates, and it leaves just a thin film of oil that will easily get into all the little nooks and crannies and uh, kind of absorb into the metal even a little bit to prevent, prevent uh, things from rusting. So there's a bunch of different little openings here, and I'll just kind of give quick squirts in all directions, like that. Uh, you'll have a little bit of excess come out probably. Uh, there's an opening here kind of around the switch. I'll give it a quick shot there. I see one around the bulb. You know, the, the power indicating light bulb thingamajigger. Actually, it seems like that straw fits in there perfectly. So let that move around. Simple as that. There's a little bit of excess to wipe up. And some will probably drip out over time, but you know, no big deal. I also like to use this on the contacts on my batteries. And you just give a quick shot like that down inside there, wipe off the excess. And there you go. You help prevent the contacts there from corroding. Also makes for a little better connection between the battery and your, your speed controller or whatever it's plugged into. Uh, so you get a little less resistance that way. But, you know, quick and easy, done. So pros and cons of a spray oil like metal protector here. The upside, super easy to put on. Like you saw, it only took a few seconds. Just spray it in the holes uh, and you're good to go. Downside is this isn't waterproof. This is more of a, a splash resistant kind of thing. So if you're talking about a receiver or speed control, it's going to be submerged in water for any length of time. This isn't the way to go. Next one I'm going to show you is this stuff called Bow Shield. This was developed by Boeing back in, I don't know, the 60s or 70s, back when they were building boats, believe it or not. It's used extensively in the marine and aviation sectors. And uh, you can find this at boating supply stores or uh, uh, aviation supply stores usually. Now when you use this stuff, you're going to want to be somewhere really well ventilated. So I've temporarily relocated to my driveway so that it can continue to breathe after spraying this. And as a bonus, I get to be blinded by the sun for a little bit here. Taking a quick peek in the back side of the radio, you can see that this board is pretty alarmingly small. Anyway. And I'll spray some on the gimbals too, just like that, and we are good to go back inside. So pros and cons of bow shield versus uh, other spray oils. On the upside, it works a lot better. I don't think there's really a way to quantify it exactly, but the marine and aviation sectors use it extensively and for good reason. The downside, it is a lot more expensive. This bottle is about $20 versus three, four, five dollars or whatever for WD-40 or metal protector. Also, you do not have to open up the radio like I did. You could just put a straw on it like that and spray it in the openings like I did earlier. But the opening it up method does ensure that I get a nice even coat on everything and that it's gonna be able to do the job to the best of its ability. Next up, I've got a servo here. Now this is an older JR servo but most of the servos are put together about the same way, so this should be pretty representative. First thing we need to do though is to actually disassemble it a little bit. The first thing I'm gonna do is seal up the output shaft on the servo using some dynamite marine grade grease. If you've got boats, you've probably got this lying around. If you don't have this lying around, some petroleum jelly or white lithium grease will also work. Uh, there may be a few other things out there as well. You're simply gonna put a big fat glob 
bead right around like that. And just to make sure you've really sealed the deal, you can also go on the inside fill it in too. Do not fill in the entire gear case with this grease. Uh, that will jam up the servo. Now to seal up the case on the servo, I'm going to use some of this red RTV silicone that I've had sitting around and the tip is all dried up on it, but you just take a tiny bit on your fingertip and you're going to put a bead right along the edge just like so. Be careful not to use too much because some of that may come off inside the servo and uh, could jam up your gears, so a little bit goes a long way. Then put that back down over the top. Like that. Now, most servos also have a bottom like that, so we're going to do the same process down here. Don't forget you have wires coming out here, so we got to get on both sides of those wires. And you don't have to worry about being quite as uh, clean here because there's no gears or anything for little bits to break off and get stuck in. And it's optional, but if you want to keep things looking neat and tidy when you're done, go ahead and wipe off the outside. And there we go, the servo's done. Upside, it is completely waterproof. It could be underwater for extended periods of time and be okay. I probably wouldn't use it on something like a submarine or anything that's going to be under for really long periods or under any kind of pressure. But uh, it'll definitely be good for steering on your boat or car or truck or whatever. Uh, downsides, you, it does take a little bit of time and you have to be careful not to get any excess silicone up inside the gear train. You may get it stuck. If you find your servo's not working after you've done this, just open it back up. You've probably got a chunk of silicone floating around in there or something. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one. Next, I'm going to show you the fingernail polish method. And to do that, I've got this old servo board here, uh, but this will work just as well on a receiver, speed control, or whatever. The fingernail polish I picked up at the base exchange. These were, I don't know, seven or eight dollars a bottle. And I've got two different colors. I'm going to show you why here in just a second. Super simple to do, though. Just paint it on. Make sure you get down in between everything really good. Make sure you get everything coated thoroughly. Don't be stingy with it. You're not going to save yourself anything by doing that, and you may just leave something exposed that you don't want to. Once the first coat's dry, I go ahead and apply a second coat using a different color. That way I can tell what areas still need to be coated. So pros and cons of the nail polish method. Unlike the spray oil methods that I showed earlier, this is actually waterproof, at least for short periods of time. Uh, the downside is it does take a little bit of work to apply it. You have to remove the case, paint it on, let it dry. Uh, you do also have to be very careful of switches and buttons. A lot of modern receivers have that bind button. If you get the nail polish in there, you could freeze up the button. Uh, you could also obstruct contacts inside switches or, or buttons, so something to think about there. Ideally, I would use this on, say, the receiver on a RC crawler that occasionally crosses streams, or maybe a boat that gets some water in it that splashes around. Uh, I think it'd be perfect for that. The last method I'm going to show you is what I call the epoxy potting method. I'll be using some West Systems epoxy that's left over from a boat rebuild that I recently did, but any brand of epoxy will work. I was actually going to demonstrate this method using the receiver out of my Axial SCX10, and then I opened it up and found out that the manufacturer already did this. So, you know it's got to be a good method if the manufacturers are doing it. First thing you're going to need some sort of container that's slightly bigger than whatever it is you're potting in epoxy. I've also applied a little bit of oil on the inside so that the epoxy should let go of that plastic after it's set up. I'm going to be using the same servo board for the demonstration. Eventually this board is going to be a lighting control module so I've already got it wired up for that. Uh, also if you watch till the end I'll provide a link to another video that tells you exactly how to turn one of these into a lighting control module as well as selecting LEDs and resistors and everything so that you can add lights to whatever uh, RC project that you want to light up the night with. All I'm going to do is fill this in. This is definitely some old hardener. It's turning funky colors. <laughs> 
Alternatively, you can also just brush the epoxy on with uh, an acid brush like this one. Uh, let it set up and then brush on another another coat. You do that a few times, you can build it up, but that does take a lot more time than, than this way. Put a little bit of paper towel underneath there because I know it's about to spill a bunch of it out. And there we go, we let the epoxy set up just like that. All right, now that the epoxy is all set up here, <laughs> I can uh, try to peel off what's left of this container. <laughs> Should have left the time-lapse video going so we could see it deform like that. Got a little hot, apparently, but that's all right. So I may have kicked the epoxy just a little bit too hot as the plastic of the container seems to be fused to it. On the upside though, we're definitely waterproof. Uh, you know, we could put this on a submarine, go to whatever depth we want, and I'm sure we'd be good for it. <laughs> uh, downside, of course, our little servo board is now quite large and, and heavy, and of course you have to buy the epoxy, and it took some time to, to get this all set up. But uh, hey, you know, it's a possibility. I'll leave it up to you to decide if this is the way you want to go. Well, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, sure would appreciate a thumbs up popping up right about here. Should be a video on how to waterproof a receiver involving a party balloon. This is a video on how to seal up your hatches. Over here is a video on how to put lights on your RC cars, planes, and stuff and all that that you can control from your transmitter. Over here should be the subscribe button, and uh, the bell icon will let you know when the next one's up and ready to go. Uh, until next time, well, you're not having fun until you break something. Or borderline melt something. <laughs>